the previous videos, we have discussed about the long-term losses, which is calculated from the equation here, as the combinations of the shrinkage, relaxations, and also elastic and crate loss. This is a simplified equation covering all the aspects of the long-term losses where there are factors for the conservative measure and we have discussed about nearly all the components of the equation except for the creep coefficient. Within the equation here, the creep coefficient appears in three places. It is used to determine the losses due to the creep to determine the kind and also for the ratio here. You will need to first determine the creep coefficients before you can compute the total losses of the long term. In this video, we are going to discuss about the computations for the creep coefficient. This slide presents the equations to calculate the crit coefficient. The crit coefficient is given by the equation here, which is this phi times k sigma. This crit coefficient is determined by the equation here, which is in the functions of phi rh as defined by these two equations. There are two equations here. The FCM will define which equation is to be used to determine this phi RH. If the FCM is less than 35 MPa, this equation is to be used. If FCM is more than 35 MPa, this equation is to be used. The equation here has this RH which represents the relative humidity and you have H0 here where the H0 is defined by 2 times area of the cross sections divided by its perimeter area. There are two factors here, alpha1 and alpha2. They are in the functions of FCM, which uses 35 FCM as a guide and present in terms of the ratio of FCM in the power of 0 0.2 and 0 0.7. For you to determine the phi RH here, you will need to first determine the FCM. You know that FCM is equal to FCK plus 8. When it is smaller than 35, you use this equation. When it is more than 35, you use this equation. In the case that this equation is to be used, you will need to determine the alpha 1 and alpha 2 in terms of FCM. The next component it will be square root of FCM. And then there is a function for T0. The T0 here normally refers to 3 days, representing the time the transfer occurred. And the T0 is calculated by this equation. The number T0 here needs to be greater than 0 0.5. The alpha here is referring to the type of the cement being used. Depending the cement type S, N, and R, the alpha will be equal to negative 1, 0, and 1. Substitute the relevant value into the equations you are able to determine the phi infinity T node. This phi infinity T node needs to be multiplied with a factor K sigma. The k sigma here will need to refer from this table, which is depending on the ratio of the stress over the FCM at the time it is measured. This sigma c t note here can be calculated from the equation here, 
which represent the stresses of the compressions and the effect of the eccentricity. Representing the stresses due to the precessing force in the member. FCMT not here is referring to this equation. You've seen these equations before in the calculations of the other losses, which is in the functions of FCM equals to FCK plus 8, T, which represent the 3 days. And also S, you can refer from the type of the cement used, S, N, or R, based on the numbers here. The ratio here is to be checked against 0 0.45. If it is more than 0 0.45, the K sigma here will be determined from the equation here. Now you have SCM calculated and you have FC also calculated. Substitute the relevant value, you get your K sigma. If this ratio is less than 0 0.45, the K sigma will be considered as 1.0. With that, you are able to determine the creep coefficient. Substitute the creep coefficients into the equation here, you are able to compute the long-term losses of a pre-stressing member.